What's going on and welcome to the Solo Shot. My name is Tom Vecchio. We have a three-game MLB slate tonight. Lock is set for 938. As always, this is one of the many shows on the FanDuel Podcast Network. You can find that anywhere, whether it's Apple Podcasts, whether it's Spotify, you name it. Make sure to give it a like, follow, or subscribe. The video version can be found on the FanDuel YouTube page. It can be found on FanDuel TV+. Plus. can be found on FanDuel.com slash watch. You can follow me on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. Before we hop into things, snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in, $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better, t- better time to get in on the action. The app is easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL, must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. First online real money wager only, $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fando.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fando.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, or Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona. Call 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. In Indiana, call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Call 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghelp.com in Kansas. In Louisiana, call 1-877-770-STOP. Visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland. Visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia or call 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. All right, let's jump into tonight's three-game MLB slate. Again, lock is set for 938. We have a very small slate to start the week and a, obviously an interesting Lock time set for 9.38 p.m. Eastern. Three West Coast games tonight. Texas at the L.A. Angels. Houston at Seattle. uh, San Diego at San Francisco. We are 100% clear of weather. Uh, Seattle playing in a dome. It's super nice in L.A. It's a little bit cooler in San Francisco, but there's no rain in the forecast for any of these. So really, really straightforward when it comes to weather tonight. Again, a small three-game Slate, obviously the matchup for Houston and uh, Seattle is like playoff scenario for both of these teams, along with Texas, all these teams vying for the AL West, the wild card, whatever it might be. Let's jump into pitching on tonight's slate, which is oddly extremely strong for a three game slate. Starting off Blake Snell at 11.5, Luis Castillo at 10.8, Logan Webb at 10.2. Justin Verlander's 9.7, and then we have John Gray at 8,000, and Patrick Sandoval at 7.5. Snell's on his way to the NL Cy Young. Castillo's having an awesome year. Logan Webb, super solid pitcher. Verlander, solid pitcher as well. It's easy to say that Snell and Castillo are the best pitching options on tonight's slate. Snell coming in with a 31.7% strikeout rate is absolutely awesome. He has a 13.5% walk rate, which again has been his issue not only this year, but throughout his entire career. He's only allowing 0.78 home runs per nine. Not too much of an issue for him there. He does have a 4.08 Sierra skill interactive ERA. And ultimately, he's not getting burned too much by that 13.5% walk rate with a very solid 43.8% ground ball rate and 52.3% medium contact rate. Snell is awesome. Again, he's on his way to the NL Cy Young this year. Almost certainly going to be winning that. The issue I have with Blake Snell is that he's 11,500, and we have a very small three-game slate. So it's pretty easy to say that Snell's in a great matchup. There's no doubt about it. When we look uh, at him going up against San Francisco, they come in with a 24.8% striker rate. With their current active roster versus left-handed pitching, which is the sixth worst in the league, he's on the road in San Francisco, which is a fantastic pitcher's park. We're basically checking off every single box we could possibly want when it comes to Blake Snell, except his salary when we're dealing with it above 11000 on a small three-game slate. So on a normal slate, we would say Blake Snell could be the clear SP1, you know, considering the matchups that we have for some of these other pitchers. But we also have to factor in that if we roster Blake Snell, we're going to be really searching for some value, and we only have three games on the slate. 
Now, Luis Castillo has also been awesome this year coming in at, at 10.8 tonight. He has also been one of the top pitchers in the league coming with a 27.3% striker rate, 6.6% walk rate, 1.24 home runs per nine allowed. He is a 3.70 Sierra skill interactive ERA that is better than Blake Snell. We also see Castillo with a few fly balls at 42.4%. His ground ball rate is at 39.4%, so just slightly a fly ball pitcher. This is the first season since he has been in the major leagues that he's actually showing to have more fly balls compared to ground balls. So I do expect that fly ball number to regress. His career fly ball rate is at 31%, and it's up at 42.4% this year. His ground ball rate for his career is at 50.3%, and this year it's at 39.4%. So he's allowing way more fly balls this season than he has at literally any point in his entire career. He's still a majority a medium contact pitcher at 48.2%. His career number is at 49%. So he's right in line with a medium contact. It's just a little too many fly balls this year from him, which is, I want to say, a clear outlier given what he's shown over the past. And he's been under one home run per nine in each of the last season, uh, last three seasons. And in 2019, he was only at 1.04 home runs per nine. So the home runs this year, I want to say, are a clear outlier for Luis Castillo. Love his salary. Love what he's been doing on the mound. His matchup is a little bit more difficult going up against Houston, who come in with a 20% strikeout rate for their current active roster versus right-handed pitching, which is the fourth lowest in the league. They are a very disciplined team at the plate, not giving away any chances. They also come in with a 111 WRC plus versus righties, which is the fifth best in the league. And they come in with a 176 team ISO, which is the uh, the 10th best in the league with their current active roster versus righties. So there's no doubt Castillo has a more difficult matchup compared to Blake Snell, but the salary for Luis Castillo is much more favorable when, again, we're going to be searching for every bit of salary relief that we could possibly find. Now, Logan Webb is here as well, and there's no doubt that Logan Webb is a really solid real-life pitcher, but his fantasy upside doesn't match what Castillo or Snell brings with Logan Webb coming with a 22.9% strikeout rate. A 3.8% walk rate is so, so low. He is not letting anyone on for free, which is awesome. Only 0.87 home runs per nine. He has a 3.21 Sierra, which is the best among these top three pitchers. He has a 61.6% ground ball rate and a 53.1% medium contact rate. When the balls get hit off of Logan Webb, he is not allowing any damage. He's not allowing any runners on for free. He can cruise to six, seven innings, one earned run. The issue is that he may not be pushing for 8, 9, 10 strikeouts. He's going to have 5 or 6. So at 10.2, if it comes between Castillo and Webb, ultimately I want to roll with Castillo simply due to his strikeout ability. And yes, it's a, a more difficult matchup going up against Houston, but we want the fantasy points here, and that lies with Luis Castillo. Now Justin Verlander is 9.7. We can say that he doesn't have as high of a strikeout rate, or we know that we can say he has he doesn't have as high of a strikeout rate compared to any of these other pitches. He's at 21.1% this year. Still only a 6.6% walk rate, which is great. 1.08 home runs per nine, which is great. 4.48 Sierra and a 44.7% fly ball rate along with a 51.7% medium contact rate. Verlander is a good option, and I think on most other slates, we'd probably be overlooking him simply due to his matchup against Seattle a lineup that certainly has a lot of power and just given the other options around him. But on tonight's slate due to his salary, I actually have a little bit of interest in Verlander. So while Snell is the best pitcher on tonight's slate and has a great matchup to really accentuate that strikeout upside going up against San Francisco, his salary may not fit into roster construction up at 11.5. So I want to put Castillo one tonight due to his salary and his individual strikeout upside. Snell is going to be there at 2A, and I'm actually going to put him there with Verlander at 2B. And this strictly comes down to Verlander's salary and 9.7 because if Verlander can limit the damage and get to six innings with five, six strikeouts against Seattle, that actually is really enticing when it comes to line of construction. Logan Webb, again, is a super solid pitcher. He just doesn't have the same fantasy upside that Castillo or Snell has. And frankly, I'd rather get up to Snell and try and just go for as much value as possible than go to Logan Webb. So Castillo one, Snell slash Verlander, 2A, 2B, Logan Webb uh, at, at three. I have no interest in John Gray. I have no interest in Patrick Sandoval tonight. And frankly, 
you know, that's where we're going to be looking for stacks. So when it comes to tonight's slate in terms of the stacking or what teams are going to be looking at, it's it's looking pretty clear that, at least from, you know, my initial uh, assessment of things, that Texas is going to be the chalk stack of tonight's slate. And then it's going to be one-offs in terms of filling out the rest of your lineup. So maybe four hit three or four hitters from Texas, and maybe you go with like a four-two-one-one stack. You're not you might not be going with a full four-four stack for two teams or four-three-one stack. It might be a four-two-one-one, or you might go uh, four-two-two, whatever it might be. I think it's gonna be a, a priority of a Texas stack tonight for a lot of people. And then we'll move into you know just some one-off searching for a little bit of power, a two-man stack whatever it might be. So when it comes to Patrick Sandoval for the Los Angeles Angels, he has a 19.8% strikeout rate this season, which is below the league average. He has a 10.8% walk rate, which is bad above the league average. He doesn't allow a lot of fly balls or a lot of home runs, only at 0.76 home runs per nine. He has a, a super solid 47.2% ground ball rate, 53.3% medium contact rate. The issue with Patrick Sandoval is that his Babbitt is at 308. He allows runners on for free, and then he's the kind of pitcher that gets hit around a lot. Again, it may not be home runs, but it's going to be walk with that 10.8% walk rate. Single, double, walk, the whole sort when it comes to Patrick Sandoval. The home run upside may not necessarily be there for every hitter going up against Patrick Sandoval, but the ability to get runners on base, constantly get the ball in action, and then play for Texas is really what we should be seeing. So when it comes to Texas, obviously this is where I think, again, a lot of the people will be prioritizing the stacking. And yes, they do have some expensive options up at the top, really with three of them, the three ideal hitters we'd probably get on tonight's slate with Corey Seager at 4.4, Dolis Garcia at 3.6, and Marcus Simeon at 3.6. I think that's where a lot of people are going to be like truly prioritizing getting a stack from Texas. Now, this is not to say that we can only go into those hitters, again, depending on what you're doing at pitching. If you decide to play a, a pay up for Blake Snell, you know, getting all three of these hitters, specifically Corey Seager, is going to be tough. He's 4.4. I think Corey Seager may be one of the best plays on the entire slate, given his matchup and given his the level of consistency and upside that he has. So Seager 4.4, Garcia at uh, 3.6, Simeon at 3.6 are all great, but Jung at 3.3, Garver at 3.2, Heim at 3.1. All of them should be in play tonight, along with Nate Lowe at $3,000. And if Evan Carter's in the lineup at $3,000, he's been hot as of late. The recent call-up for them, you could certainly be looking there. But as we move further down, this is where the value from Texas might be necessary with Leody Severus at $2,800 or Ezekiel Duran at $2,700, depending on really what your lineup has the ability to afford, again, depending on what you're doing with pitching. So Sandoval should be a pretty clear pitcher to be attacking tonight. On the other side, John Gray like isn't a pitcher that I'm worried about, and I think you could be looking to attack him. The issue is that like it's, it comes down to the lack of power and the lack of essentially excitement when it comes to the Angels lineup, where it could be a full 10, 15-game slate, and I don't think I'd be looking at anyone from the Angels for any bit of upside where they clearly lack power, yeah, they're affordable. So maybe if you just want to take a, a one or two hitters here or there, Brandon Drury, I think is fine. You know, getting a Randall Gritchick, I think is fine. And again, these players aren't super exciting when it comes to overall fantasy upside. But again, some of their salaries do play favorably into roster construction. The next question would be it's like, where else do we go? You know, we have seen Verlander struggle at times this year. Could we go to some of Seattle? Sure. You know, uh, it, Luis Castillo has struggled with home runs and fly balls. As I mentioned, his home run and his fly ball rate are way higher this year compared to what he's shown throughout the course of his career. Now, those should regress as time goes on, but if he's currently struggling, like does that present upside for your Don Alvarez, Kyle Tucker, two lefties, who we know have plenty of tremendous power upside versus righties. And again, Castillo's awesome. He's just happened to be struggling with fly balls right now. So this is, again, where I would say the one-offs or the, the, the smaller two-man stacks could come into play for a team like Houston. Yes, I, uh, your Don Alvarez is awesome. Uh, Kyle Tucker is awesome. But you know, getting to someone like Jose Abreu, I think is a fine option. And Alex Bregman at 3,500 is also a, a viable and totally fine option. Jose Altuve, I don't have a whole lot of interest in. If I'm paying up for someone at 44, I prefer to be Corey Seager. But if I'm realistically going to someone from Houston, it's probably just going to be your Don 
at 39 or Kyle Tucker at 3,700. And the same thing can be said about Seattle. Verlander is good. He's not as good as he once was. If you're looking to take some shots, yes, it would be with Julio Rodriguez at 4,300 if you can afford him. But you know, that may not always be the case. And I think Eugenio Suarez at 2,900 or Teoscar Hernandez at 2,900, both of them could be in play. And I guess you could say the same thing about uh, what, you know San Diego. You know, you're not super interested in rostering them as a full stack because, you know, we, I think we'd all agree that Logan Webb is a pretty solid pitcher. But if you want to go to a one-off with Juan Soto, you want to go to a one-off with Fernando Tatis, that is certainly fine. Or, you know, throw in Machado, throw in Xander Bogarts in the mix as well. So I think Texas, this is where Texas kind of shines tonight in terms of their priority as a stack. Getting a full four-man Texas stack in there. And then one or two hitters from... Uh, Houston, one hitter from Seattle, one hitter from San Diego, kind of mix and match the one-offs or, or smaller two-man stacks, just because, A, some of these hitters are expensive. We're not going to be able to afford full four-man stacks from Houston and Texas, uh, you know, and then we want to obviously pay up for pitching. So tonight's slate is certainly very interesting because we actually have amazing pitchers on tonight's slate, but we're just starved for value because it's only a three-game slate. Let's get to some dinger calls to close things out. Uh, I'm going with your Don Alvarez. Like I said, Castillo's awesome. He really is. But the fly balls and the home runs are clearly an issue for him this season. So I'll be continuing to look to, you know, continuously looking to at least get a few hitters going up against Luis Castillo. There's no doubt about that. And then let's go with Marcus Simeon for the Texas Rangers. As I said, Patrick Sandoval isn't a massive fly ball pitcher by any means, but eventually it'll get to the Angels bullpen. We're not worried about the Angels' bullpen. We're interested in a Texas stack. And I think Simeon's going to be in a good spot for the power and the fly balls that he truly has shown this season. All right, so that does it for today's podcast. We will be back tomorrow with a bigger slate for MLB. This is the final week of MLB season. Of course, there's still plenty of other sports going on, whether it's NFL, whether it's UFC. Make sure to tune in to the FanDuel Podcast Network because we have shows up for those. Obviously, football throughout the week. Uh, with, with Jim Sonis and Brandon Gadula. Austin Swain is back doing UFC full-time. That is back in full swing, so make sure you are subscribed. Uh, of course, give it a, a like, follow, or subscribe on Apple Podcasts, whether it's Spotify, the video version can be found on the FanDuel YouTube page, can be found on FanDuel TV+, can be found on, found on FanDuel.com slash watch. You can follow me on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. And until next time, good luck in your contests.